The new iPhone 16 Pro Max has the largest battery ever seen in an iPhone, so now it's time for it to go head to head against its predecessor, as well as the new Pixel 9 Pro XL and four other top end flagships in this extremely detailed 100-0% battery life drain test. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness level using a lux meter. They're all sitting on 100% battery health, except for the 15 Pro Max, which is on 96%. They have all been updated to their latest available software updates with the Pixel running on Android 15. They're all SIM free and only connected via Wi-Fi. They're all using 120 Hertz LTPO displays, except for the Xiaomi 14T Pro, which has a 144 Hertz adaptive sync display. And they have all been set to their native screen resolutions. Does the large largest battery iPhone ever have what it takes to dominate its predecessor and come out on top of some of the best Android smartphones in terms of screen on time. This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, it's worth making sure that all phones are sitting on 100% and they're all currently plugged in charge, which they all indeed are. We'll be testing out the temperature at each time interval, which we'll get to a little later on. And we're sitting at a room temperature of around 17 degrees Celsius with the AC on hours before the test and throughout the whole test. But Xiaomi's always tend to overheat, so we'll have to see what happens there. Now you can't really compare the degrees Celsius in terms of temperature at the start, but if you are curious, Idle charging temps, the iPhone 16 Pro Max is the coolest and the 14 Ultra from Xiaomi is the hottest. Kickstarting things off over here with the first app. And just so that you guys know, those of you who have not watched one of my drain tests before, at the top right hand corner, we have the time interval. And that is in relation to the percentage below the branding of each device, above each device themselves. And above each device is also the temperature in terms of degrees Celsius, which will change at each time interval. So the percentages and the temperatures are both locked into that time interval. As you can see, we just hit the 30 minute mark time interval with the Pixel now being the hottest and the Samsung being the coolest in terms of interval and peak. Interval will always change, but peak kind of locks in once it reaches that absolute max temperature that that specific device got. But in terms of percentage, the Huawei and Xiaomi 14T Pro are sitting at 100%, the rest all under 100%. And now after the one hour mark interval, we have the 16 Pro Max with 95%, which is 1% below the 15 Pro Max with 96%. 94% on the Pixel, 95% on the Samsung, 98 on the Huawei, which is matching that of the Xiaomi 14T Pro, and trailing the pack almost is the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Just below that is the Pixel, is the only one sitting on 94% here. Now we are reaching that time interval of an hour and 30 minutes. So we're sitting on 89% on the 16 Pro Max, which is now ahead of the 15 Pro Max, 87 on the Pixel, 89 on the Samsung, 96 on the Huawei, which is now 3% ahead of the Xiaomi 14T Pro and is leading the pack, 88% on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And for those of you who are a little bit rusty on specs, at the bottom of each device, I do have a little bit of a spec sheet over there. And right at the bottom right hand corner, we have the current app we're using and what we're doing inside that app. Now, all of these devices are global ROMs. They're all running on global ROMs since they're all global variants. And while all of them are brand new with 100% battery health and none of them have been used personally by me, except for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which I have been using on the daily for about a year now, it's only sitting on 96% battery health, which is actually pretty impressive after a year. But I always do these tests after a year of use from last year's 15 Pro Max or 14 Pro Max, whichever one it was, because it's really interesting to see how well it lasts a year down the line. Now, in my experience, battery health hasn't really changed up much. What does affect iPhone's screen on time is the new iOS version. So it'll be interesting to see how it stacks up against its newer brother, the 16 Pro Max, in terms of iOS 18. And they always seem to dip quite a bit with the new major software updates. But make sure you wait until the end of the video so that I can show you the best iPhone 15 Pro Max results I got and the first time I ever tested it as well and what iOS version it was using at that time, which is pretty interesting. I do a very big breakdown at the end comparing all of them and their predecessors and the first time that these phones were tested just for a bit more of a breakdown. Now I actually waited to record this battery drain test even though I wanted to do it sooner because I was waiting for the Pixel 9 Pro XL to get the Android 15 update since it launched and was shipped with Android 14 and Android 15 only came out on October 15th. So yes, a stable version is installed on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So it should be pretty interesting to see what happens over here. Now, since my last drain test, the S24 Ultra is now running 
the global One UI 6.1, which is actually running on the Eastern One UI 6.1.1 code base. So it should also be a little bit more efficient. I was also waiting for that one. The iPhones, Pixel and Samsung are all running lithium ion batteries, while the Huawei and both Xiaomi's are running lithium polymer batteries. And the Huawei has the largest battery here, while the iPhone 15 Pro Max has the smallest. Now, after the four hour mark interval, we have 75% on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, 68% on the 15 Pro Max, big difference over there. 72% on the Pixel 9 Pro XL, 75 on the Samsung, 83 on the Huawei, 70% on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. So it's much more expensive than the 14T Pro and it is doing worse in terms of battery percentage here, almost 10% after the four hour, 30 minute mark interval. Now, just to let you guys know, I did leave selfie video recording there at 1080p 30 FPS because I've always done that and in all of my 30 plus battery drain tests I've done and with main video, we'll be sticking to 4K 30 FPS, even though all of them can do 4K and even 8K video recording selfie and main video over here. I'd like to keep them the same so that you can compare these exact screen on time results with all other previous tests that I've done on my channel, but don't compare them to other channels. I guess you could, but they run different screen brightnesses on all their devices. I keep them exactly the same and they also use different apps. So the screen on time will fluctuate a bit. Now I'm also running some benchmarks over here and that's not because I want to try to drain the phones quickly because trust me, these phones last forever, but because I can't play high demanding games on all of these seven devices at the exact same time. I don't have the hands for that. So I actually use benchmark tests and 3D Mark is actually known as the test to simulate high performance gaming, just to simulate high performance gaming. That's why I do it for about an hour, just three different benchmarks, that being Antutu, 3D Mark, and now going into GFX Bench. Now, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but the Xiaomi 14 Ultra dropped by a hell of a lot in terms of battery percentage and jumped up to a crazy 66 degrees Celsius. The 14T Pro was a lot cooler, almost 10 degrees cooler, and the Huawei was just in between them, with the four phones on the left being the coolest and the iPhone 15 Pro Max having the lowest peak over here. After the six hour mark interval, we have 44% on the Huawei, which is leading the pack over here. Then it is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And then after that's the Xiaomi 14T Pro, then the Samsung, well, the Samsung, then the 14T Pro, then the Pixel, then the iPhone, and then the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Now we're playing some casual games over here with flip diving, and then next we'll go to Subway Surfers, and then Helix Jump, so on and so forth. And just to get back to a couple other things here, the Huawei is doing quite well here, as I'm sure you can see, it is leading the pack, but it's running on older, less efficient Android 12 software, and it also has the least efficient chipset, that being seven nanometers. Now the iPhones are running the most efficient chips at three nanometer process, no, while the rest of the Androids, aside from the Huawei, is running on four nanometer nodes. Now we're reaching the seven hour mark interval over here and they should all make it the Xiaomi, yes, it does make it 7%. Xiaomi 14 Ultra over here, which is trailing the pack. Next up is the iPhone 15 Pro Max and then the Xiaomi 14C Pro is getting beat by the Pixel now, then the Samsung and the iPhone 16 Pro Max is not too far off the Huawei, which is still leading the pack over here. Now we are getting toward that seven and a half mark interval, seven and a half hours. And no surprise here, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra enters hibernation mode at 1%. And as soon as you exit, it kills the device. It got a screen on time of seven hours and 21 minutes, which is not really surprising since the last two tests I tested it out, it got seven hours and 23 minutes. Interesting food for thought over here. It's predecessor, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra got seven hours and 23 minutes, and that was running on less efficient software and a less efficient chipset. So things are not really improving in terms of Xiaomi's Ultra device, but their 14T Pro is still kicking it over here. Hopefully it makes it to the eight hour mark interval. The Huawei is still winning. 32% so far, but not too far behind. The gap has decreased quite a bit between it and the iPhone 16 Pro Max with 28%, which is now 12% ahead of its predecessor. 22% on the Pixel, I am quite impressed over here since Pixel devices don't really have the best track record when it comes to screen on time. The Xiaomi 14T Pro is just behind the Pixel though, and the S24 Ultra is impressing me quite a bit here, which is now currently sitting third when you look at all the times, and all of them made it to eight hours. Now, in terms of actual battery life, I consider five hours to be good battery life, six hours to be great, seven hours to be fantastic, so Xiaomi 14 Ultra, that is you, eight hours to be out of this world, nine hours to be very rare, 10 hours is just out of the universe, and 11 hours is pretty much unheard of. And last time I tested these phones out, the Huawei made it to 11 hours, and the Honor, which is in this test, also made it to 11 hours. So let's see if the new big iPhone can make it to that as well. We just hit eight hours and 48 minutes, and 
Sixth place is the iPhone 15 Pro Max getting eight hours and 48 minutes, which is probably the worst screen on time I've gotten from it before, but it did just get the new iOS 18 update. And every time the previous generation iPhone gets the latest major update, it always takes a dip. Yes, sure, it did drop by, but in terms of battery health down to 96%, but it shouldn't make a two hour difference since the best screen on time I ever got on my 15 Pro Max was indeed 10 hours and 40 minutes. So it shouldn't be two hours iOS 18, Apple wants you to buy the new phone if you want the new update. That is just how it goes. Nine hours and 19 minutes, the Pixel drops out, which means the Xiaomi 14T Pro actually beat it. Nine hours and 19 minutes is actually very, very impressive. Considering the best time I ever got from the Pixel 8 Pro was eight hours and 14 minutes. So this is over an hour more screen on time. And then the Xiaomi caps off there, nine hours and 21 minutes, lasting just two minutes longer than that of the Pixel. It does have a slightly smaller battery, 5,000 as opposed to 5,060. And then the Samsung, nine hours and 24 minutes. It actually jumped up 12 minutes from the last test, probably because of the efficiency we're getting from the new One UI 6.1.1 update. Well, the code base of it, it's still called One UI 6.1. Nine and a half hours, the iPhone 16 Pro Max and the Huawei, Pure 70 Ultra are the only two devices still standing over here with the Huawei being the hottest in this last interval and the iPhone being the coolest, but the hottest peak is still the Xiaomi 14 Ultra and probably will be in the lowest peak. Surprisingly, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the 16 Pro Max seems to generate a little bit more heat than its older brother over here. Now back to a couple interesting things over here. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra was the only device that overheated in GFX bench and it, that's usually what happens. The 14T Pro did not though, because the 14T Pro is running a MediaTek Dimensity 9300 chipset. And food for thought over here, it actually does not have efficiency cores, though it lasted exactly two hours longer than that of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. The Samsung beat the last time that I did it. And obviously the Pixel has done phenomenally well iOS is the one to blame for the 15 Pro Max and I'm not quite sure what's happening with the 14 Ultra from Xiaomi. Hopefully the 15 Ultra gets better. 10 and a half hours. The gap is nearing over here, just 1% between the 16 Pro Max with 4% and Pure 70 Ultra with 5%. This is absolutely insane. What is gonna happen here? We're currently going through Facebook, watching some live TV over here, and I cannot wait to see which one is gonna win. I did not think this was gonna happen from a company that people kind of disregard these days. Coming from Huawei, 10 hours and 59 minutes. When I hit exit in emergency mode, it killed the device. Last time out, it didn't kill it, but last time I got 11 hours and three minutes. This time I got 10 hours and 59 minutes. So it really is much of a muchness. Fantastic time. Second place, iPhone made it to the 11 hour mark interval, still with 1% left in the tank. How much longer is it gonna go? 11 hours and eight minutes, it calls it a day. The largest battery iPhone ever and the longest screen on time I have ever seen from an iPhone in my channel's history, which is just ridiculous. However, the Huawei was very, very close to it, just nine minutes out, though it does have a larger battery. It seems Apple is still king when it comes to optimizations. That is until we get the next major software update, this time next year, iOS 19. Seventh place, we have the Xiaomi 14 Ultra coming in with seven hours and 21 minutes thanks to its 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Still very impressive screen on time, but it's nothing close to what we saw from the rest of the devices that being sixth place, the iPhone 15 Pro Max more than an hour ahead of that, eight hours and 48 minutes, 4,441 milliamp hour battery, which is significantly smaller than its successor. Fifth place, the Pixel 9 Pro XL, the best screen on time I've ever seen from a Pixel device on my channel, nine hours and 19 minutes, 5,060 milliamp power battery. Then in fourth place, we have the Xiaomi 14T Pro, which is the cheapest device over here. Nine hours and 21 minutes, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, very impressive. The S24 Ultra made it to third place here with nine hours and 24 minutes, 12 minutes better than the last time I tested it out, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. In second place though, we have the Huawei Pura 70 Ultra, a brand that many people are disregarding these days. Fantastic screen on time, 10 hours and 59 minutes with a 5,200 milliamp hour battery. And first place, very surprising here, the iPhone 16 Pro Max does it again. First time ever tested, 4,685 milliamp hour battery, 11 hours and eight minutes, which is just ridiculous. 
Now, when it comes to temperature, the highest temperature each device reached, that being the peak temperature, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra got the hottest at a whopping 66 degrees Celsius, which is actually no surprise, and the iPhone 15 Pro Max beat its successor with the lowest peak here at 49.2 degrees Celsius. Now, if you take a look below each device, you'll see the first time I tested them. The first time I tested out the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, it got seven hours and 23 minutes, so just two minutes better than this. The first time I tested the Huawei, it got 11 hours and three minutes, so only four minutes difference. The first time I tested out the S24 Ultra, 9 hours and 46 minutes, so it's only dipped by a bit. And the first time I tested the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it got 9 hours and 11 minutes. My previous battery drain test, the iPhone 15 Pro Max got 9 hours and 15 minutes of screen on time, which was just two months ago running iOS 17.6, so it's dropped by about half an hour since the new iOS update. But if you take a look right at the bottom of the screen, just below first time tested, we're looking at the predecessor's best times over here. Now, the the best time I ever got on the 15 Pro Max, when you're looking at the 16 Pro Max over there, was 10 hours and 40 minutes running iOS 17.3.1. And that was the best time, not the first time, that was the best time. And this time, the 16 Pro Max did it in 11 hours and eight minutes, which is higher than the best I ever got from the 15 Pro Max. The best time I ever saw on the 14 Pro Max was nine hours and 54 minutes. So there's been an improvement every single year. Now the Pixel 9 Pro XL's predecessor was the Pixel 8 Pro, pretty similar battery size, eight hours and 14 minutes was the best I got on it running Android 14. So it's jumped up by more than an hour, Pixel devices are now finally there in terms of battery screen on time when compared to other flagship Android devices and I am very, very happy to see that. The S24 Ultra's predecessor is the S23 Ultra, same size battery, eight hours and 54 minutes, so quite a jump up from that. The Pure 70 Ultra's predecessor was the P60 Pro, end of an era and all that jazz, eight hours and 27 minutes, huge, huge difference here. The Xiaomi 13 Ultra had the same size battery as the 14 Ultra and it actually beat it, so Xiaomi's going a bit backwards there, but the Xiaomi 13T Pro did it in just under eight hours, where this time it got nine hours and 21 minutes. So the Xiaomi 14T Pro seems to be the best flagship device that Xiaomi has to offer in terms of battery life. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of each physical device, you'll see 5,200 milliamp hours slapped on there, because that is the largest battery capacity that we have in this test, and that is from the Huawei Pure 70 Ultra. So that is the same battery, so it would stick to the same time. Now, based on their milliamp hour per minute readings, if they all had the same size that large battery as the Huawei at 5,200 milliamp hours, the iPhone 16 Pro Max would stay in first, but would jump up to a crazy 12 hours and 21 minutes of screen on time. Then second place would remain the Huawei with the same time of 10 hours and 59 minutes. Third, the iPhone 15 Pro Max would jump up from sixth to third, then the rest of them would obviously all drop with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra sticking in its seventh place here. So yes, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has dropped my unit anyway to 96% battery health, but 4% battery health should not affect it by two hours of screen on time since the best time I ever got was 10 hours and 40 minutes on it. But again, first time tested, iPhone 16 Pro Max, 11 hours and eight minutes, very, very impressed. But you can't not be impressed with a smartphone that is running a less efficient chipset and less efficient software and a brand that is still sticking around despite everything that's happened over the years. Huawei Pure 70 Ultra is still impressing me almost 11 hours of screen on time. And I have to give a shout out here to the Pixel since it's been a long time coming, but we finally have good battery life coming from a Pixel device. And obviously that little guy on the side there, the Xiaomi 14T Pro has impressed me as well. I hope that you guys all enjoyed watching this video as much as I actually did enjoy sitting there watching all these phones drain and trying to figure out which one is gonna win this battle. If you guys are interested in any of these devices and you live in South Africa like me, and you would like to purchase one of them, make sure you check out the link down below. As always, this is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.